Um, after we published these first papers, we were approached by the International Union of Operating Engineers, California's most powerful labor union. These are the guys that build all the highways, and they've got a lot of um, 68,000 members. They spend a lot of money in treating high blood pressure and diabetes. And Dr. Lyle, our psychologist, and I were invited to present the results of our data to uh, a meeting of their administrative staff because they were interested in possibly making our program a covered benefit for the International Union of Operating Engineers Local 3. And so we went to the meeting, and they had a big group in there, and they had all kinds of representatives. One guy was an NIH reviewer for the National Institute of Health. One was an actuary that does all the calculations about what stuff costs, including their retirement benefits and their medical costs. They had representatives of the contractors that hire the union guys, and then they had some of the union guys there. And we presented our data, and uh, as you can imagine, it was a little bit controversial. The contractors were objecting to the fact that we were asking for a program to be covered, that they were already spending too much money on healthcare, and they thought they shouldn't have to be paying to send people to a resort. And then I explained what happens during fasting with low back pain, headache, nausea, vomiting, skin rashes. And eventually they interrupted me and said, okay, fine, it's not a resort. You know? but they still objected. The NIH reviewer was helpful. He said he had analyzed our research, and he said he thought it would save money, that they were spending you know, $66 million a year at that time treating these conditions and that getting people healthy would probably be cheaper than putting them in the hospital and cutting their feet off for their diabetes and treating their heart attacks and strokes from their blood pressure. And the funniest thing was at one point, the actuary who had been running numbers throughout the thing said, Dr. Goldhammer, these gentlemen each get a retirement benefit when they, when they retire, if they live long enough. If we do your program and it works, won't it dramatically increase our costs of paying them retirement benefits by making them live longer? I know. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I thought, oh my God, they really think like this. I didn't know. I'm just like, uh, mm -mm. and then a guy stood up who I knew was a crane operator because his, his neck was like twice as big as my thigh. And he said, listen, little man. You should remember who you work for. He said, you work for us. He says, why don't you do a calculation? Figure out how much money we're going to save when I come back there and break your neck. Then they voted unanimously to make our program a fully covered medical benefit. Any member of the union or their family could come to the True North Health Center, no cost, undergo fasting for the treatment of high blood pressure or diabetes. But they asked us to do a study in order to determine whether it actually was saving them money. So we did. We took the first 30 consecutive members with diabetes and hypertension that they sent us. They, lost, they were with us an average of three weeks, lost 26 pounds. On follow-up, they were down 28 pounds, so they lost a little bit more. Their systolic blood pressure and diastolic had been largely sustained, and the union saved more money in the first year than the entire cost of the program. So they extended that. We went on for over 10 years doing this, working with this union member, over 100 union operators. But the interesting thing was the very first guy they sent us, the very first guy they sent us, they didn't tell him what the program was. So he's got 220 over 120, capped out on five medications, carrying a keg around on his belly. No idea what he was going to. He thought he was going to get a sixth medication. Right? So you know, he shows up at our place, and he's like, oh, I'm in the wrong place. I said, no, I got your name on the list here. You're OK. He goes, no, I'm in the wrong place. I said, no, you're here to get well. He goes, that's not me. I'm not sick. So now I'm a little pissed. It's like, what do you mean you're not sick? You're diabetic, hypertensive, you're 100 pounds overweight. I said, you're going to die. He goes, yeah? Well, aren't we all going to die? <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> I said, yeah, but you're on $880 a month worth of medications. We get you healthy, you won't need those medications. He said, what do I care? I don't pay for my drugs, my union does. At this point, I realize he's not my highly self-selected, highly motivated, typical hardcore vegan patient that I'm used to dealing with. You know. And I'm thinking about his medical history, and I thought, well, let me try one more thing. And I said, you know, what happens to diabetic hypertensive males that are on a lot of drugs? So I said, well, you know, get you off all those meds, we might be able to do something about your little problem. So he stands up, and I'm thinking, uh-oh, because he's a pretty big guy. And he said, why the hell didn't you just say so? <laughs> so far, so good. Got his attention. So he's telling me, 
that uh, you know his um, diet is essentially triple cheeseburgers. So, and that's what he's been eating right up to the time. You know, I saw that we better feed him a little bit, you know, before <laughs> we start fasting, because, you know. So I give him some food, and he's trying to eat the food, but he's like, <coughs> <coughs> can't swallow. I, I think, oh my God, maybe he's got a tumor. So I sit down next to him. I said, looks like you're having a little trouble with the food. And he said, what food? Is it this? It's not food. Is it this? It's disgusting. He said, if I have to eat taste and swill like this the rest of my life, I'd rather just die. He says, why don't you go out to my truck and get my 12 gauge? When I'm not looking, just shoot me in the head. So we checked him in. I ended up fasting 26 days. He lost 50 pounds, normalized his blood pressure. Normal, got him off all his meds, did, did great, changed his attitude. Afterwards, he's eating the food. He's actually eating it. So it looks like you're doing better with the food. He said, yeah, your damn chef's finally getting the hang of it. <laughs> it took me 20 minutes to convince him. It's the same stuff you ate when you come. He goes, no, when I came in, that stuff was disgusting. He said, this stuff's not bad. He wouldn't have complied a day, not even a meal had we not had to get a chance to neuroadapt him, you know, get him to where the food was tolerable to him. I saw him six months later at a semi-annual, we're doing blood pressure screening for the union, he was, he was there. I said, how are you doing? He goes, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> so True North Health Foundation, our nonprofit research foundation, is involved in research and education. We've recently completed a study, actually it's being analyzed this week, the data, Taste and adaptation. We actually were able to detect minimum thresholds to sugar and salt. We were able to investigate how taste change. Why it is guys like this go from the food is disgusting, tasteless slime that they can't choke down to being able to enjoy it. Because we believe that part of the change actually occurs to how you perceive um, food. We had 21 subjects to test for minimum threshold. Um, we're also looking at changes in the microbiome, the, the several pounds of bacteria that live in your digestive system that are breathing, respirating, and pooing in you constantly. We're also looking at changes in biomarker after fasting, including the number of mutations in B lymphocytes, and the efficiency of autophagy itself can be measured now. And we've done a study with Washington University, a gentleman named Luigi Fontana, where we took uh, subjects and we took their blood samples and stool samples before, during, and after uh, long-term water-only fasting. And again, that's being analyzed right now at Washington University. Uh, we're anxious to see the results of that. We published a paper, uh, it's called A Case of Non-Pharmacologic Conservative Management of Suspected Uncomplicated Subacute Appendicitis in an Adult Male. So we took a guy that was scheduled for surgery for his appendicitis, and instead of going to surgery, we put him on a water-only fast, managed to resolve this problem, and showed a two-year follow-up, and got it published in, a, in a, one of the journals. Um, Mostly just to piss people off, you know. <laughs> it just shows you, I mean, th this is an, uh, an extreme example, but there's many conditions that normally you, would, you wouldn't think there's any options other than surgery, but in fact, in some cases, uh, conservative management can be an effective alternative for people that don't want to do uh, more aggressive uh, treatment. This paper, this is a great title, Exclusively Plant Whole Food Diet for Polypharmacy, that's excess drug use, due to persistent atrial fibrillation, alteration of heart rhythm, ischemic cardiomyopathy, in other words, enlargement of the heart, lack of getting blood flow to it, hyperlipidemia, too much fat in the blood, hypertension, high blood pressure, in an octogenarian, a person over 80 years old. Basically, we took a guy who was your diabetic, or uh, hypertensive, atrial fib, um, uh, dementia uh, symptoms, put them on a whole plant food, SOS-free diet, and watched them wake up. And once we got him off all of his drugs, we stabilized him and wrote up this case report. What was interesting is one of the reviewer's comments, when they did, and they did publish it, this is uh, British Medical Journal, uh, they, uh, one of the reviewers said, well, that's an interesting case, but what made you think it was the medications? Uh, 
This paper was a challenging case in clinical practice, long-term relief from chronic post-traumatic headache after water-only fasting and an exclusively plant foods diet. This dentist had been at a conference and got hit in the head with one of those outdoor tent poles and suffered uh, post-traumatic brain trauma. And one neurologist told her he thought the problem was there was some type of dural tear and it was inflamed and she got her drugs and she went to treatment and nothing worked. And when we saw her, she had had 16 years of constant daily head pain without relief for 16 years. Pain from 8 to 10 out of 10. Uh, she had been through all the normal Neurontin and pain medications and the rest of it. Nothing had been successful. So in desperation, um, she decided to undergo medically supervised water-only fasting with the hope that somehow that might help reboot her system. She went through 19 days of fasting with absolutely no relief whatsoever. But on the 19th morning, she woke up with a very strange sensation. It lasted about five minutes, and it was the first time in 16 years she was out of pain. Then the pain came back and continued till we eventually terminated this fast. This was supposed to be a 40-day fast, but in her case, we made a very rare exception. We went to day 41. At day 40, she said, look, I need to go one more day. And I said, why is that? And she said, because the men fast for 40 days. Moses, David, Elijah, Jesus, and she said, women, we always need to do just a little more. So she went for 41 days. At the end of the 41 days of fasting, she still had some prodromal symptoms, but no acute head pain. So we refed her, we spent six months rebuilding her, and then we fast her again for 40 days. So she did a 41-day water-only fast, six months of refeeding, a 40-day water-only fast. At the end of that time, she had no headache, She's now had seven years with nosophagia.